this is what we call a huff. You remember that huff I showed you in a minute ago? Huff. How about the word Hashem? Where's my friends over here? I got a lot of guys over here that know what Hashem is. You know what Hashem is. How do you know Hashem? The word Hashem. Hashem. The name. The name. Hashem. It means the name. Ha. The. Stuck the in front of God. Six times in the Bible. It's, no, I'm sorry. Bollinger calls six. Ebal says four. Well, you can argue with Bollinger. No, you can't argue with Bollinger. You have to argue with me now. <laughs> ha appears the God. The correct tr uh, translation of this is, now there came a day when sons of the God, did you hear me? Did you hear the difference? <coughs> the sons of God or sons of the God. Did you ever call this? Okay. There came a day when sons of the God stood before him and Satan appeared with him. You remember all this? Okay. Now the reason this is important is that when we use gematria for sons of the God, it comes out 153. There it is right there. There it is in your paper. Go to page what? 13 now? I can't read that. There's too many lights here. 11. On your 11 right now. There's the ha. Or, uh, and there's your Elyon with the A in front of it, solid A. But if you look on the chart I gave you, look up each one of these letters, give it a number, comes out 153. But I'm having trouble with that. Before I got the book, or while I was still trying to, no, after I got the book, but before I read it all, I had figured out, whereas he used 50, I used 3, because that looked like a 3 to me, so I put 3. And whereas he called that a 40, I called it a 60, because it looked like 60 to me in that chart. And I gave it to you, you can check it out later, you see, good. And I came out, and we call, there's a new word that I have to go into now, it's called permutation. And through, this is also a form of gematria. And through adding these numbers to 15, and adding these numbers to 111, permuted is, is 3 because you add the significant figure in each one, it's 1 plus 1 plus 1 is 3. And you then combine the 1, 5, and the 3, you got 153. <laughs> Too much? Yeah. You lost me. Two different languages coming up with the same word. Did I go too fast? Yeah. Stephen Jones, through Bollinger, comes up with 153 through Bollinger's numbers. Ebaugh, through his numbers, comes up with 153 through permutation. What's permutation? I'll do that again for you, Bob. Third numbers, we add five to... One is six, is 36, now that's 41, that's 51. Added to 60, 60 is 111. Now 111, you add each significant number, one plus one plus one equals three. Now this right here is called permutation. This is a form of arithmetic where people permute numbers. Now, now, Many years ago, I invented a permutation system for the IBM select for the IBM Model C typewriter. You remember I telling you about the system? It was a mechanical permutation because permutation is something standing for something else. That's the best way I can say it. And the position of a rod stood for a letter. That's the best way I can say it on a typewriter. And I had worked for IBM for less than two weeks when I turned in the suggestion on a permutation system that has saved IBM over a million dollars 
for 20 years, all documented, and I personally received much money because of that permutation system. I learned permutation a long time ago, Bob, a long time before I got into Bible. I want you to hear this, you hear this question. Why didn't I add the one and the five to make it six up there? Why didn't I permute that? Because I knew I, where I was headed. Uh, 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 wait a minute now, let's go back. There are two ways to think. One is reckoning. The other is what? Dividing. You deduce or you induce. You remember these terms? Right. We've had these before. If you know where you're headed, then you start with the answer. And I had the answer, it was 153. How did you know it was? Because that's what Peter said. Oh. But it doesn't say that there's 153 had to do with the names of the, with the number of the sons of John. That's right. That's what Stephen Jones said. But you did this unbeknownst to what Jones did. Yes, I did it unbeknownst to what Jones or Bollinger were doing. But, but how did you know that you were looking for 153? How did I know I was looking for 153? 153 fish. Long story. Twenty some years ago, God told me when I when I when God, I God show you what 153 is, then you may publish the new book. Hallelujah. <laughs> and He was not talking about this book. God was not talking then about this book. I published this when I finished it. I had the book finished. And God told me 20 some years, and I'm going to teach you a whole lesson on that, but not this year. That take, that'll take me at least six hours. It's a fantastic lesson down in Washington. And, and a lot of things, uh, uh, talking with people, and talking about codes and crypts and, and all that, and, and uh, the State Department. It's all part of it, and God said, when you know what 153 is, then you can publish the book that shows the meaning of the Great Seal of the United States. I'm the only person that has the book. It's sealed. That book is in my safe. Big uh, uh, combination on it. You can't get it. But you will have that book soon. And uh, it'll be, uh, it's a result of the 153. I knew, I've been looking for 153 for years, Bob. But that's personal. God told me to look for it. Jewish Encyclopedia, there are 19 permutation formulas. Nine and nineteen different ways to come to the same answer. And when I read some of them, that's when I decided to throw it all out. I don't want to throw the baby out with the bath with the bathwater, but I want to tell you something. I got sick of this permutation and sick of this gematria because I read one one of the uh, things that says you're supposed to add and subtract and all this kind of stuff, and I said. You're allowed to throw one or two words out of the sentence if it doesn't fit. <laughs> and when I read that, I said, that's not for me. I'm too much of an engineer. You know what I'm saying. Yeah. That does not satisfy this engineering mind. If, if that's what they allow, and they even allow you to add letters to make it fit. And uh, that's in the, what they call the Gematria formulas. And I've decided, and I've chosen, that I will not teach those formulas. How many are going to praise the Lord for that? In the Bible, I also find that those who receive direct blessings from Jesus Christ total 153. There's the names, there are the people, there are the events, the number of people per event. Put it in a line, put it in your computer, because I had to do it on my adding machine. It comes out to 153. Take your choice. Now I particularly like, I've chosen the 153 people that Jesus blessed. And I have chosen to not like permutation and gematria because of all the way different ways you can do it. You follow me? Yeah. But, if you're into it, it's okay with me. And somebody's going to have to get into it eventually. How many know 
Colonel Speed Wilson. And what does he say 666 represents? Kissinger. Write it down. Kissinger. Yeah, you've heard him in his lectures, his tapes, books. Kissinger. When Benny and I went to church back in Indianapolis, Indiana, they told us all you had to do was write Mussolini and it came out 666. That's because we were fighting Mussolini. Yeah. Right. He also says a pope. You're right. Latin, no Latino on, on this, uh, and it, it says 666. But you know what? Roman Catholics are taught that all you have to do is write down Martin Luther and it comes out 666. Are you seeing what I'm doing? Yeah. Yeah. What am I saying? I don't think you're going to find it that way. What we're trying to do is every religious group blames it on the other group. Come on. I don't think that it's right for Protestants to say that it's the Pope. They don't recommend that we uh, be the pulpit pounders and demand that everybody uh, agree with us on what it means. I happen to believe very strongly that it is the industrial military complex. In my mind, there's just no question. Because later on, in Revelation chapter 17, we find that the, that the kings and the horns turn against the woman. Do you remember that? And they turn it and, 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 and burn her and eat her flesh and that kind of stuff, you know. To me, the woman is the um, uh, Rothschild International Monetary Conspiracy, and riding on her is the, are the uh, military, uh, international, uh, industrial, military complex. And it's, you knew that, that wars were fought for banks. You knew that. That's the reason for it and all. And so to me, it's pretty well settled, but. If you, if, you're, if you still have to have one of the other religious groups, that's okay. I, I can put up with it. Uh, let's see if I got it all now. Did I get it all? Did I have I hit all the pages on it? Yes. Say it in Job again. Talk about the scripture in Job. All right, we're in one six, or we could be in two one. Same thing. Now came a day when came. Instead of the sons of God, I prefer to say sons of the God. And when you say it that way, then you take these letters right here. Is that L L Y? No. Oh, I'm sorry, Ben. I, I know where you're headed. Thank you. I feel like I'm being led right now. <laughs> this is not L L Y. This is Elohim. Elohim. Elohim, not the sons of L L Y. El El Elyon is the most high God, El Ahim is the creator God. And the sons of the creator are one, five, three. In Gematria. By either guy's calculation, either Bollinger or mine. What does that mean? What does all this mean? What are you saying? First, you've got to understand Gematria. You got to know that you can have a name and a number of a name. You got to know that Jesus gives you a new name. And the number of your name means something. Now, in the book of Revelation, chapter 13, verse 18, it tells you that there's a bad guy and what his number is. But in order to display the whole truth, I've shown you that none of us can pound the pulpit and say it's 666 anymore. Most of us, before this meeting tonight, would have demanded that his number was 666, wouldn't we? Yes. Come on, most all of us. Most all of us demanded his number 666. That's what it says in my Bible, and I'm right. But I've shown you time and time again different, different uh, translations, interpretations, and different things of that nature. And we can't be that demanding anymore. We just can't say what it is. We can't make people fit our mold anymore. Now, does that threaten you when I teach this kind of thing? Or does it help you? Do you feel relieved? Or do you feel threatened? What? Well, 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 it's all right. So what? But listen, honey. If I, had, if I was a preacher and had just had a radio show and was demanding 666 and came in and listened to this, 
Yeah. You see what trouble I'd be in? Yeah. I, I bet you there'd be a preacher who didn't like what I was preaching. No, sir. 666, I just put it on my radio, put it in my book, and it's, you know. So, what we find, uh, one of the problems we find is that once you say something, you commit yourself with your mouth, and a lot of times, you don't want to back out of it. So why does the salesman shake your hand, give a big smile, say, it's a nice day, isn't it? The first thing he wants you to start saying is, yes, 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 until yes. you get to the last question, right? Yes. It's the same basic principle. Once your mouth starts voicing a, a word or a, a concept, you don't want to change it. And that's, that's worse than religion or salesmanship. Uh, did I, is that the subject you wanted? Okay. But Peter brought in the fish, he brought in the sons of God. Okay. Yeah. Uh, assuming that... Uh, sons of the God. This is the way I prefer to say it. Sons of the God, which would be most technically and satisfying to this engineering mind. Correct. Okay. 153 means either sons of God or the number of sons who were blessed by Jesus Christ. Now let me ask you a question. How many here have been blessed by Jesus Christ? Raise your hand. Then you're in the number. Hallelujah. You're part of it. Glory to God. You're part of that number. Do you follow me on this now? Yes. You got a blessing from him, that's, then you're in on it. Amen. All right, you're son of God. Does uh -huh. that mean you're mature sons of God? Uh, it uses the word shuyos, not piety on pais, or pi, uh, uh, but shuyos. Piety on pais, technon and shuyos. Piety on infant, pais child, technon teenager, shuyos, a full manifest adult son of God. But unfortunately, sometimes the word shuyos includes all. It's a, it's an inclusive word and a descriptive word. And so I choose when I'm teaching to not apply Helios to the other three, but the text does. Now, what is your question? I want to get it right. I want to understand your question. This 153 that you're referring to as, uh, as page uh, 8, is that, are they talking about the uh, mature sons of God that has reached? Wow. And growth. His question is, on 153, the 153 sons of God, are these 153 gods, Pideon, Pies, Technos, and Helios? It doesn't tell us. But I can, I can extrapolate a little bit. I think I'll interpolate. Brother, now we are brother, and now we are the sons of God. But it does not appear what we shall be. That word is technon. Brother, now we are the technons of God. Turn the one next to you and say, "God called you a teenager." Turn to tell them. God called you a teenager. Tell them. God called you a teenager. It does not yet appear what we shall be. Now you're thinking in terms of what we shall be when we're fully manifest. And arrived. Curious. Therefore, as I interpolate these scriptures, not, not with any other reason, it appears to me that nobody there was any more than a technon, because that's what John called. Did I make sense to you? Okay. Now, that also means, I don't know where you caught this, that also means that even the apostles of Jesus Christ were not fully manifest. Right. Right. Are we caught that or not? Now, if you heard my lesson in Acts chapter 21, you know I believe it. You know, you've heard me teach on Acts 21 and how Paul went back and all that. Well, I, I, I believe that it, you're so much better off by hearing from the Holy Ghost Amen. than you are by hearing from a, uh, a clergy, person of the cloth. You know, clergy means cloth. And uh, so. A clergy person is neat if you don't have the Holy Ghost. But if you got the Holy Ghost, I think you can find out yourself. Amen. Uh, and I'm not trying to put clergy down because, hey, we need them. But uh, uh, 
the clergy is needed by the Paideon and Pais. When we get to be taken on a Gios, then we can find out for ourselves what the Bible says. That makes sense, didn't it? Amen. Nobody's mad yet? I got more clergymen on this side, so I've got to look over here for a minute. Uh, Bob, don't get me into another bad one. No, all, right, all right, one more. Uh, I have a thought about, you know, this says sons of Elohim. And it occurs to me that uh, sons of Elohim, now I know this might sound a little strange, but doesn't that also include demons? Yes, it does. Let's turn to Psalm 82, verse 6. And, and well, here's the point I'm trying to get, is that Jesus told a parable about, Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto some fish who cast a net into the sea, and they drew to shore, and they separated them. They threw the bad away, and they gathered the good into vessels. Uh, but in this case, the, you know, does that refer to the 153? As, as good. As good. The 153 are good in this case, Bob. Okay. But they are sons of what? Elohim. Now, give me Psalm 82, 6. I have said, Dear God, and all of you are children of the Most High. All right, let's do it in the Hebrew. I have said, Ye are Elohim and children of Elion. Okay, turn to the one next to you, look them square in the eye, and say, Jesus said you're God's. Tell them that. Jesus, Jesus said you're God. Yes. Psalm said you're Elohim, right? right. Is that what it says? Yep. You're Elohim. And children of El Elion. Children of El Elion. You are Elohim. Every person here is an Elohim already and a child of El Elyon. El Elyon is the most high God. Elohim is the creator God. Yes. Chapter after chapter after chapter after chapter. All on these differences and divisions. Now I'm not asking you to allow it now. But I'm asking you, it would be a great honor to me if you would write me a note sometime and say, Brother Yvonne, I did. I took the time to read your book. It took me three days, three nights. Uh, whatever. It'll, uh, it, I can tell you it'll take you more than three nights unless you start at five and don't eat supper. And go till midnight. You just, you know, it's just full. It, this is in... The word is encyclopedic. Right. This is encyclopedic. This is an encyclopedia, and that's why it's indexed. Who mentioned that? I think Tony mentioned that, didn't you, about indexing, or who did that? Bob. Bob? Bob uh, talked about the index. I am, if pride wasn't a sin, I'd be proud of this index. This is a wonderful tool, a marvelous tool. And when I think of how much time was spent or former author's index, and how little time I spent with a computer made this for me. It's just, it's just plain wonderful. And there's no question about it. We had to have the computer for uh, Tom. We had to have the computer before we had the book. It's just, God knew, God knew the time. So there it is. Yes. Uh, uh, brief question. Um, because of the... You know this is Kurt, don't you? Hi, Kurt. Hi, Kurt. Hi, Kurt. <laughs> because of the... Um, it's not a digression. When, when Bob went into the thing about the uh, the 666 and the amount of talents of gold that came to Solomon in a single year, the revelation that you taught about that being heavy oppressive taxes and industrial military complex. Now, I, what I submit is that that, that is the answer you know, you're sitting here about the 666, okay? And, and the fact that there are some script, uh, some scriptures, some translations that don't, uh, five of them that don't have it, you know, straight. 
and some 20 some that do, 28 that do, five that don't. And, and where you have pray that God will reveal and illuminate the original text. Pray that we may find the truth about 666 or whatever it is. Um, I submit that it's the same way you came up with a 153, Revelation of 153. You knew what the answer was when you when you formulated that. So you came up and you created the, you know, the confirmation. You've already taught the confirmation of the 666. Really what you're doing here is you're helping to show part of the, the mess that that pre-existed your teaching on the answer. Aren't you glad I didn't teach this before I taught the King's lesson? Amen. Uh -huh. Yeah. It wasn't. Couldn't have, you, you couldn't have taken it. Am I, did I make sense? Yeah. That? Yeah, yeah. 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 You brought up a subject that's been touched on several times here tonight. That's the two ways to think. Now in the Bible, it uses a Greek word for thinking that means to add. It's the word is reckon. We reckon. What do you do when you reckon? Well, if you got two marbles here and two marbles here, how do you, what do you do? You reckon. I reckon it's full. <laughs> well, what the old guy says? Well, if the sun shines and the creek don't rise, I reckon I'll be there. Amen. <laughs> Have you ever heard him say that? He is adding. If this and this and this, uh, then I reckon I'll come get it. Now that's all right for Greek philosophy. But Hebrew philosophy does not work that way. Hebrew philosophy divides. When you think, you start with the answer in Hebrew. When you think in Greek, you start with the problem. Did you hear me? So when we start with a problem, we add and we add and add and add and try to get to the answer. This is called inductive reasoning. Deductive reasoning starts with the answer and divides to the problem. This became a very, very serious issue in Greece. One man's name was Socrates, the other Plato. Socrates said, you think by dividing. Plato said, no, you think by adding. Plato was Socrates' student. Does anybody remember some of this? Yeah. How many have heard of these guys? Yeah. Socrates had to take him off. Do you remember the story? Yeah. And he committed suicide because they took a vote. The Greeks said, no, we're going to think by adding instead of dividing. Can you imagine a national political vote on on such a subject as this? Well, that's the way it went. That's what came. And, and you have to understand it. Because in the Bible, Jesus said, this is the way to pray. Our Father which art in heaven, start with the answer. Amen. Good way. I guess that's where Jeopardy came in. I couldn't hear me. I guess that's where Jeopardy came in. Jeopardy? <laughs> answer was a question. You asked the question, but the answer. They want, they, the they want you to know the correct answer. I guess that shows what I know about Jeopardy. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right. Well, anyway, when you start with the answer, you're being, you're following Socrates' philosophy. You follow? Now, this philosophy is not popular. When I was an engineer working over here at AMP, AMP, the boss called me in the office, it was 4 o'clock and he wanted to have an answer by 4.30. I said, I don't have enough time, i got to get this, i got to get this, got to roll it together, put it together, and figured out the answer. And he says, I don't have time, I want your gut feeling. Did you hear me? What was he asking for? The answer without the problem. I was an engineer, trained. In, in inductive reasoning. I had never been forced into a situation like this before. So at 4.30, I gave Rodding my gut feeling. It's the best I could do. He asked for it, and I gave it. I was really surprised that an engineering supervisor would even know the difference between the two ways to think. I don't know whether you caught that or not. Because most of them weren't really that savvy. But the Bible is plain that we must think as spiritual people, we must start with an answer and divide to the problem. We do not add problem to problem to problem to get to an answer. Am I making sense? Yeah. Yes. Yes. All right. So, 
we're playing some games here this, uh, this evening on this 163 and this, I mean the 153 and the, and the 666. But basically, you're right, I did start with the answer. In either case, I started with the answer. And I knew what I was headed for. But you know something, Kurt, as long as you brought it up, I spent over a week and a basket full of crumpled up paper finding the process to get the answer. Now you can pound on the pulpit. <laughs> All right. Uh, did you hear him? Yeah. All right. Thank you. I, I want those good jokes to carry. <laughs> yes, I, I believe it's important that we know what we're doing and how we did it and uh, why these are, things are important. But in order to get to it, you had to first learn this word. Say the word. Gematria, which means to apply either letters to numbers or numbers to letters to decode because coded within it is a message, is a meaning. That's what it means. And so you can take that or leave it. The, uh, somewhere in here, I, I forget just what page it was. Let me find it. 1200 to uh, 1500. What page is that? Lost it. First page. First page? Thank you. Bible Gematria is also includes a large number of permutation and factoring. I didn't even mention factoring, did I? Here I've been going along with permutation, now I gotta get to factoring. How many would rather I just leave factoring? You want to talk factoring? What are the factors of twelve? One and two. What are the factors of 12? 3, and 3 is 4. 3, 4, 6, 12. 12 and 1. 11 and 1. I don't think we know. All right, well, let's start again. All right. 2 times 6 is 12. All right. 3 times 4 is 12. All right. 6 times, all right, there you got it. There's your factor. Your factors have to be multiplied. One times twelve. Factors are multiplied. But permutation is not. Permutation is by taking the numbers mass. And you do both with gematria. And I, I I'm like sorry. Reckoning to me, I reckon you're right, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> but but John says do it. John says count it. In the book of Revelation. Oh, I forgot that. That's another point. Let me go back and get this one because this is important. I hope you, I hope you don't mind these min minor points. I think they're important. Here it goes. I lost the pointer. Let him that hath understanding, C-O-U-N-T. If anyone has insight, let him calculate. There's a difference between calculate and count. Calculate uses factors and counting uses reckoning. You didn't catch that? It's a bad translation. This is a bad translation in the King James for count. The word is calculate. It says very plainly, I looked it up in the Greek, it's calculate. You calculate as number, you don't count as number. The King James said to count it, but you really factor it. Calculate, calculate. Just minor things, but they they become major if you're looking for an answer. How many understand that? Amen. Yeah. So we don't count a number. We, in this case, we calculate. Then, then how do you do that? Well, you know, calculating is factors and division, right? Counting is adding. That's all he's saying. Start with the answer. So then we are looking for the factors of 666? Yes. It says to calculate. It doesn't say to add. And so what kind of wisdom and uh, understanding are we going to get by doing that? Well, we'll yes. All it's saying is if you would just believe Ebay, you're right. <laughs> Six 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 is the way to go that came to Solomon one year. 
Can you calculate that? 1 Kings 10, 14, 2 Chronicles 9, 13. And it's a, and it's a it's a coded message to people who could understand that Nero at the time see this was written in 96 AD and he couldn't call Nero Solomon and he couldn't call Solomon Nero so he said the Antichrist was is not and shall be and another place he said the Antichrist was is and shall be when he used the word is it meant Nero Caesar always the word was refers to Solomon in his 666 and the shall be is a world leader who shall promise peace security and safety by the use of a giant army and a giant navy Well, now you've just factored it. Could that be the United Nations? It is the United Nations. It is the United Nations, and the people that supported the United Nations, the people that financed the United Nations, and they believed that a giant army, a giant navy, would bring peace. That's why I put the army into Bosnia to bring peace. Honey, you don't bring peace with armies. Never have. You know that, don't you? Men's will be responsive to the ways of God in Jesus' name. Amen. It's been good to be with you, and we look forward to another time.